golden age of Hollywood, a young man named Walt Disney looked to make a name for himself in animation. He created one of the most fun and comedic characters to ever grace the silver screen. Of course, I'm talking about Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Unfortunately, the lovable little bunny was snatched away by studio executives before Disney had a chance to turn Oswald into a proper icon. Since Walt Disney and his collaborator Ub Iwerks were less than lucky with Oswald, they decided to try something different. In 1928, a mischievous mouse appeared in movie theaters for the first time. Since then, Mickey Mouse has appeared in stores, on television, in theme parks, and most recently, in your McDonald's Happy Meal. Thank you so much for joining us for another episode of McDonald's Unboxed, where we uncover the truth behind the fast food chain's promotional tie-in. I am Brandon Speck, and today we'll be celebrating one of the... Marcy. Marcy, what is going on out there? Oh, I'm just packing a few things. I have to look good if we're headed to La La Land. I'll need three different color dresses and shoes to match. Oh, and which do you prefer, the blue or the white? Personally, I like the yellow sundress. You know, I've never Marcy. been on a real movie. Marcy! I have no idea what you're talking about. Hollywood, silly. Tinseltown. If we're going to talk about the main mouse, we got to do it in style. So I figure, why not visit the oldest existing McDonald's in Downey, California? And it's just a few miles away from Hollywood. Wow. This Happy Meal just got considerably more expensive. Attention all passengers. Please make sure all your luggage is safely stored in the overhead compartment. Then buckle those safety belts and subscribe to Retro Spectrum. Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of McDonald's Unboxed. And this is a special episode because as you can see, we're at the world's oldest McDonald's. Let's go check it out. This location opened in 1953, and it's easy to pick out because of the gorgeous mid-century sign with that old-school McDonald's mascot speedy welcoming hungry travelers. I also love that slanted roof hugged by those iconic 30-foot golden arches. Did you know that the Downey location actually closed in 1994 and was going to be demolished before the National Trust of Historic Preservation stepped in? Due to public demand, they wound up spending two years restoring the restaurant and even added a little museum with additional seating. All right, now that we snagged your Happy Meal, let's take a little detour and see if we can get a peek at Walt Disney Studios. I'm looking at one of the original street signs here in Disney Burbank. After the success of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs in 1938, Walt Disney had the funds to finance his studio in Burbank. Construction finished in 1940. The facility was purposely planned around the animation process with the actual animation building in the center of the campus. In addition to buildings serving as camera, editing, as well as ink and paint, there was also a movie theater, soundstage, and commissary. Hey, where did Brandon go? One of Walt's favorite dishes. I'm gonna have a, uh, a bite of Walt's chili. This is really fancy tasting chili. It doesn't taste like what I used to eat growing up out of a can. Not by any means. Oh my gosh, this is really fancy. Didn't we already stop at McDonald's? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you wouldn't let me eat the Happy Meal until we got home. So now I'm starving. All right. We'll head out, but before we go, let's check out Legends Plaza. It's a great place to appreciate some of the people who made the Walt Disney Organization great. Look at it's Jim Henson. Oh, cool one. Clarence Ducky Nash. And then for all you imaginary fans, there's Tony Baxter. Both John Goodman's here. Oh my gosh, look at the size of John Goodman's hands. Billy Crystal right next, so there you got Mike Wazowski and Sully, that's cool. Here's another pairing that's kind of cool. Danny Elfman and Johnny Depp. Exitensio. Oh, Exitensio. And then, well, oh, Angela Lansbury. Lansbury. Wow, <laughs> let's see how my hands stack up against Angela Lansbury's hand. Actually, she had relatively large hands for a woman. I'm not even gonna lie. 
it's kind of cool to see some of the thing people we don't closely associate with the Disney brand in the past make it up into the Wall of Fame. And Carrie Fisher, Mark Hamill, down here George Lucas, and then right over here we noticed two of my favorites. Not only do they have Stan Lee, they also got Jack Kirby here. How cool is that? Okay, we found Steve Jobs, Ed Wynn, and a whole bunch of princesses. You forget how historically how important these four ladies were. That's right. But over here, we got all the Golden Girls, and I can actually compare my hand size to Betty White. Betty White, actually much smaller hands than Angela Lansbury over there, so. You know, Marcy, I actually can remember a time when there was a working film studios right in Walt Disney World, Florida. Originally, Disney Imagineers had planned on making a pavilion in Epcot, which was tentatively referred to as great moments at the movies. But the Disney CEO at the time liked that idea so much that he decided to expand it into an entire park that served as both an operating studio as well as a theme park celebrating Hollywood. So naturally, they called it Disney's Hollywood Studios. No, 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 silly. Disney's MGM Studios and Great Moments at the Movie, now called the Great Movie Ride, served as the centerpiece. Everybody just sit tight, right? In my opinion, The Great Movie Ride served as one of the most quintessentially Disney attractions for almost 30 years, right up until it closed in 2017. Why would they close the centerpiece of Disney's MGM Studios? Disney's Hollywood Studios. What? They changed the name in 2008. In fact, the park changed quite a bit since 1989. To answer your question, they closed the Great Movie Ride to make way for the first ever ride-through attraction at a Disney theme park themed around Mickey Mouse. Take a ride on the cartoon side. Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway at Walt Disney World is rolling into McDonald's. Thing you can expect a smooth ride on my track. Hop aboard with a ride inspired toy and calcium packed milk in your McDonald's Happy Meal. Mickey's new look is inspired by those hilariously entertaining Paul Ruddish cartoons. That slapstick style is very reminiscent of those original Mickey shorts from the 1920s and 30s. <laughs> Even though Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway opened at a crazy time in history, it's quickly become one of my favorite attractions. And you know what? They're already planning on building a second Runaway Railway in Disneyland, California. We're gonna have to go back and check it out. Okay, but not before I check out my Happy Meal. So as I always enjoy pointing out, this lovely Happy Meal smile that shows up on every box. And on the flip side, we have this incredible artwork with two of our favorite characters. Hey, you got Mickey and Minnie and they're riding the Runaway Railway. And on the side of the box are some interactive stuff, some jokes, some riddles. And then if we flip all the way to the other side, Ooh, you can yeah. see there's an actual contest where you can win a vacation for four to Disney World. And Neat. this is just something interesting they're doing to coincide with this whole Runaway Railway Happy Meal, which I think is kind of neat. All right, let's open our first Happy Meal up. You ready? And see what's on the inside. It looks like it's Minnie Mouse. And I think she's riding the 
Dinosaur Ride from Animal Kingdom. Now, some of you may be old enough to remember this attraction by its original name, Countdown to Extinction. Interestingly enough, when the ride first opened in 1998, its official sponsor was in fact, McDonald's. The name changed to Dinosaur in 2000 to coincide with the Disney's computer animated film of the same name. The attraction uses the enhanced motion vehicle ride system, similar to the Indiana Jones ride in Disneyland. Dinosaur is, by the way, crazy scary, and many must be plenty brave to take on that ferocious Carnotaurus. So I like the look of this toy, Minnie riding around in this like Jeep with a passenger in the back. Yeah, it reminds me exactly of the dinosaur attraction at Animal Kingdom. That's right, right down to the little iguanodon sitting on the back. And if you put it down on the, on the tabletop, it actually rolls around and the iguanodon kind of just bumbles around in the back. It's not a lot of action that no, takes place on this one. It's simple, but it does the trick. All right, let's check out this second toy. What do we got on the inside? And I'm seeing Spaceship Earth, and it looks like Daisy flying around Spaceship Earth. Wow. Soarin', California. It originally opened in Disney's California Adventure in 2001. I remember experiencing that. It was amazing. The attraction was so well received, they decided to build another in Epcot's Land Pavilion in 2005. Then, in 2016, they changed the attraction to Soarin' Over the World, with a brand new video showcasing the beauty of our planet. So apparently, Daisy is a fan of Epcot. And a fan of Soarin'. Yeah, a great attraction at Epcot Center, as I like to call it. And I bet you if you put this on the table, it'll roll around, it'll swing around the Epcot ball. Yes. Very, very neat. I'm gonna say this, we have two very exciting toys right now. If we got the engine, we'd have like an official train. It so. would make my day. All right, final toy, cross your fingers. I'm hoping with this one, we get our engine. And lo and behold, Goofy. It's Goofy driving around in the engine, just like in the actual attraction. Let's open this up. Let's go check this out. And this is cool because this really reminds me of the actual attraction. And I think it's gonna it's gonna make us a little bit. Look at him. He's so cute and he's all cartoony. It really makes me want to go back and ride the ride again. It's and a fun watch the ride. cartoons. And watch the cartoons. Correct. Yeah, really, really, really cool toy. Very colorful, definitely matches the colors of the attraction. And again, put it down on the table. And yeah, man, it, 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 it rolls around. This is gonna make a really, really nice train. All right, now that we got Goofy, we have our engine. Let's see how easily these things snap together. And super, super simple. We can just put it down on the table. You can see these snap together. There are a number of different toys to collect. Let's see, let's check it out and see how well they slide when they have a bunch of them together. And not too bad, really. No, and it's cool. You think you can get a bunch of these and put them together and they can go in different orders? How fun. So those are the toys we picked up from McDonald's and I definitely think they're cool and... Uh... What's the matter? Did you uh, lose your train of thought? No, eh, I get it by the way, train, run away, we're away. No, I was just trying to think of some good questions to ask at the end of the video. Well, let me give it a try. All right, everyone, before you leave, I'd love to know, what's the first Disney film you can remember seeing? Also, which Disney character best fits your personality? Tell us about it in the comments section below. I would have to say, I feel a little like Snow White. That's funny, because I was thinking you were grumpy. I'll remember that. Quick subject change. If you like this video, and you want to help us out, drop a like on this video, and consider subscribing to Retro Spectrum so you don't miss a single episode of McDonald's Unboxed.